All right. Hi, welcome to another episode of Make It With Makers. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and in this video we're going to talk about making a passport cover wallet. It's not just a cover, it's also a wallet. It has pockets in it for, uh, for cash and for whatever else, and then also for other ID cards um, and things like that, as well as, of course, holding your passport. So, um, this was actually one I made. I did an article for the Leather Crafters Journal and, uh, and put it in there. Uh, but now we have made templates for it, uh, much like our, our Roper wallet and our Billfold wallet that have become quite popular already. Uh, so now we're going to continue on with our, uh, our kinds of templates that we put out. And I'm going to adjust the camera here so we can talk about the templates and you don't have to look at me the whole time. So there it is right there. Okay, so... The template set for the passport wallets um, is three pieces. This is the back piece, which you can do out of tooling leather or whatever you want, really. Um, needs to be about four to five ounces. Uh, so it says it right there on the on the piece of, uh, of, of acrylic. Okay, and then you have your pocket sleeves. Uh, one of them is, you know, your pocket on one side and then the sleeve that actually holds the back cover of the passport. Um, also needs to be cut out of about two to three ounce leather. And then you have your credit card um, slots. Uh, this is just like the one for the, um, the other wallets, um, just to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so we're going to go through that again. We'll go through how to do the card slots and all that because it, it should be a part of every video of every, um, everything that's involved. So um, tools that we're going to need for this, we've got our... Uh, our double-sided sticky tape that we saw here at Maker's Leather Supply. Mine's affixed to my little stitching pony just to use as a dispenser. Um, we're going to use some, some edgers over here. We're going to use a, a stitching wheel because we're going to hand sew this one too. Uh, good sewing awl. This is a Berry King awl and awl handle. Um, we also sell these, uh, but they are Berry King that makes them. Um, I'm going to use some red tiger thread on this one. I know my, my spool is getting pretty empty here, but it's what I got. Um, and then we're going to need a small hole punch. Again, this is a very old hole punch. It says number eight on it, but I'm not really sure what the exact measurement is. Um, and then most importantly is a scalpel, which I did not get out. So I'm going to pause the video while I find my scalpel. Sorry. All right, found my scalpel, and I'm going to put a fresh blade in it because blades are cheap for these things, and um, it's always just best to have the sharpest blade you can, and that means putting a new one in it. So, right quick. All right, got a new blade in our scalpel. So, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. It's it's uh, it's all rectangular type cuts, and then we're gonna um, we'll radius the the corners later once it's ready to uh, be finally uh, sanded and um, all the edging done and stuff like that. All right, so. I'm going to go ahead and stand so I can do this a little easier here. Once again, hold your template. We're going to do the back piece first. Again, it's four to five ounce leather. Um, this leather is uh, something I got from Tandy. Uh, it's called a Mesa Double Shoulder. Um, fairly inexpensive. I think they're right around 100 bucks. I'm not 100% sure about that, though. I did, though, have to split it. Um, it's, it comes in eight to ten ounce. Uh, I split this one down to uh, four or five, and I split these down to two, three so that they would match my project. So anyway, but this is a Mesa double shoulder. I get it from uh, from Tandy. Um, I use the Tandy down in Round Rock, Texas, and uh, Jay down there, the manager, is just awesome to us. So we're going to hold our template onto the leather really tight, making sure we don't let it move, and we're just going to cut right around it here, keeping that scalpel right up against the template because it is exactly the right size that it needs to be. All right, I'll save that piece because it's actually just the right size to make another one of these later. So, all right, so there's my back. Cut these off, or they're going to annoy me the entire time we're doing this here. All right, so I uh, I have my back piece here. And uh, I'll just set it to the side. 
then I'm going to cut out my pocket sleeves. Um, we're going to cut two of these. Again, we're going to cut them from two to three ounce uh, leather, um, just like it says right there on it. So first thing I'll do is just go ahead and cut this top line so I can make sure I leave myself enough leather to make the other one out of. Um, these pieces are already kind of rough cut to the right sizes because, I, again, I had to split them and I didn't want to waste a bunch of leather, um, you know, splitting giant pieces and then cutting them down and everything. So I got them, I got them pretty close to the right, right size before I split them. I have a bucket right below me that I usually throw scraps in, but the problem is I've thrown about 10 scraps at it already and I haven't hit it once, so I'll be picking up a lot of stuff at the end of this video. All right, so here's my other one. Again, these are symmetrical. You don't need to turn the pattern over or anything to make the other one. Um, you just have to cut two of them. So there's that, those two pieces right there. Again, I'll set them over here to the side. And now I'm going to start on my last piece. Um, this is the card pockets. All right, give me just a second, I forgot my bowl. Okay. Um, the card piece here, uh, it says it right here, do not cut out this little window. It's going to be used to mark the back side of this to show us where our double-sided tape is going to go so that we can attach our, uh, our Tyvek to it um, to do the, uh, the backs of the wallet or the backs of the credit card pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the perimeter of it first. There we go. So there it is. Um, there's the perimeter of it, and now I'm going to trim those little fuzzies that didn't get cut good. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do is use my little hole punch. I'm just going to put it right down through the center of these holes here and give them each a punch. Um, and then I'll take my scalpel and, uh, and cut those lines, and my cutting surface is also over there. All right, my punching surface, I don't punch on this little mat because I'll ruin it pretty quick if I do. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes. I've got to make sure that I'm good and lined up and everything's perfectly straight here. And I will punch my holes. I'm all in my small punch here. And I'm just going to put them right there in those little holes. And give them each a little tap. And they're going to be great. All right, once I'm done with that, once again, I'm keeping my hand on this so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to stick my scalpel right in there. This, these cuts are made perfectly for a scalpel blade. Not an X-Acto blade, not a, a box cutter blade, but a scalpel blade. If you have one of those others, you're going to have to just um, take the template off the leather and uh, draw your lines, um, trace your lines, and cut them in with something else. So there it is. There is the, uh, the card pocket piece right there. Put this away now. All right, and just like in the wallet video, um, or the billfold video, we're gonna turn this over and we're gonna follow the instructions right here. It says, to mark the tape lines, turn the leather over, place on the top of this rectangle at each cut line and mark along the bottom of the rectangle. Um, I'm going to caveat to that a little bit. We're going to put the top of the rectangle right up against that cut right there. 
but I'm going to offset it just a little bit because that line needs to be out here to the side a little so that I can see it once I have uh, once I have my Tyvek layers on there. And if you haven't built one with us yet, then you'll you'll understand in just a minute. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to just mark right there at the bottom of the rectangle. That's one tape line. It's kind of hard to see because of that scalpel. You do such a fine cut that it's kind of hard to see where the others are. Um, I explained in the other videos too about um, the reason that there's the little hole punch at the end of these credit card slots. All right. Um, the reason is that it that that is is that if somebody overstuffs these card slots and puts tons of cards in there or something like that. Those little punches are going to keep the card slots from uh, from ripping at the ends. Um, these things can, I mean, leather does rip if you stretch the living crap out of it. And those are going to protect it from ripping near as easily. So it'll help them expand a little bit. And it's just a nice stopping point for that, for that seam so that it doesn't just continue to rip. Um, our double-sided tape, I've already cut the pieces I need for this. But what you need are seven pieces, and each of those pieces needs to be approximately the width of these cuts, okay? You're going to pre-place um, five of those seven pieces, all right? You're going to place one above the top card slot, the, the top cut, all right? That's going to be where our, our uh, ribbon or Tyvek uh, ends. You're going to place the next three just below each of the cuts, okay? Okay. So here's one, it's a shorter one. Um, again, these, cut, these pieces of uh, double-sided tape need to be roughly the width of these card slots. It's okay if they're a little bit short. It's okay if they're a little bit long. Um, I prefer to cut mine just a tiny bit shorter, but it, it, they don't have to be. I mean, if you want to measure them out, they can be the exact width of the slots. That's fine. So again, I've placed one of each just below each of the uh, the card cuts, okay? And then I'm going to place one more just above the bottom drawn line, just kind of in the middle, centering it between where these card slots, um, the, the, the holes are. Get my mall kind of in the way again. Sorry about that. So those are all pre-placed. Now we're going to talk about the material that we're going to weave in and out of here. Um, I had several people have emailed me since the last videos I made. Um, this is some sort of fibrous paper like Tyvek. It's black and it is awesome and I love it and I don't have a clue where to find it anymore. If anybody knows where to find it, you let me know. But this is super, super thin. I mean, I think it's thinner than regular paper. Um, very, very strong. I can't rip it. Uh, I came on a big roll that was like, I don't know, 18 inches, 24 inches long. And then I cut the roll in half because I actually split this with the woman that found it. Um, we each paid for half of it. It was not cheap, but it's amazing stuff. That being said, I normally use Tyvek. Okay, this stuff right here. Uh, they use it to wrap houses. Um, the, the post office uses it to make envelopes. Um, they make chemical suits like painter's suits out of it, stuff like that. Um, one of the things I failed to mention in the last video is I don't buy it in these strips. I buy it in giant sheets and I cut it myself uh, into the strips. I cut it uh, out of with a uh, like a roller knife, um, like someone that does a lot of fabric uh, would use. And I cut it into the strips, the widths I need. This is actually uh, for the kind of pockets that stand up and not the kind that lay down like this. But anyway, that's that's something I failed to mention on the last video is that I, I don't buy it in this width. I buy giant sheets and I cut it into the widths I need. All right. So to start our, our card pocket weave, we're going to take the tape off of the, or take the protective paper off the back of this double-sided tape that's on the bottom cut line, okay? So we're gonna take it off, and we're gonna carefully lay our Tyvek, or ribbon, you can use ribbon, you can use cloth, you can use all kinds of stuff. I like Tyvek because it's super duper thin, and you won't have a problem with it, um, um, getting too thick in the middle when you have, you know, six or seven card slots that you're stacking up on top of each other. So we want to take this and we want to make sure it's nice and parallel with the wallet uh, outsides there. And we're just going to stick it across that tape. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to bend it down to where it's right even with that top card pocket or that bottom card pocket, uh, the cut. 
and I'm going to form a very nice crease. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and take the paper off of the back of that piece of tape that's right there at the very bottom. Okay, then I'm going to lay it across that tape. I'm going to pull it not tight, you don't want it pulling against the, the, the leather, but you do want it straight and down against that crease. You don't want this to be all wrinkled up and stuff like that, okay? After I've done that, I'm going to pull it back up again, and I'm going to create another crease right at that bottom drawn line there, just like that. Once I've done that, I'm going to go up here, and I will take the tape off of the second um, cut line. All right. Gonna go up to it, and I'm going to lay it right across. Once again, making sure that I don't have any wrinkles or anything like that and that everything's laying flat and straight. All right, now here's where having these lines sitting out here to the side really helps out. If they were just under the Tyvek, then I wouldn't be able to see them. So that's why we moved that over just a little bit and drew that line. So you're going to take your tape and you're going to set it just above that second line, like that. Okay, we'll take our Tyvek, we'll bend it down once again, we'll put it right at the bottom of that card, card cut and we will crease it really well. Once we've done that, we will go ahead and remove the backing off of that tape. And again, we'll lay it down just flat across there. Okay. Then we're gonna fold it back up, fold it even with that, that black line that we drew, and crease it again. Then we'll take the tape off of the, the one that's just under the top line there, and we'll lay it flat across there. All right, we are now forming the last pocket. Okay, so we're gonna take our tape, put it just above that top line that we drew, like that. We'll take this and we'll fold it down, get it nice and even with that top line, that top cut. All right, once we've done that, Pull the backing off this tape, and we'll lay it across that. All right, one more time. We're going to create a crease just by, just with the uh, the bottom of that or the that bottom drawn line there. Got it a little bit crooked. Okay, just with the bottom of that line there, or the top of that line there. Now we'll go back up to the top. We will remove that last piece of protective paper and we'll lay it across there. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and cut off our excess Tyvek because we are done building the pockets. All right, so what do we do now? Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take and fold this in half. All right, so we're gonna fold it in half just like that. And then we're going to sew right up that fold right there, just to keep it nice and tight and, uh, and all that. Let me grab something here that I can help press that down with. I'll continue that fold, keep it nice and crisp in there. Um, let me grab my, my stitch groover. I need it right quick. And then we'll run a... Uh, We'll run a stitch line, uh, so hand sewing six stitches, six stitches per inch. Somebody after the last videos asked me what kind of a stitch groover this is. This is uh, made by Bob Douglas up there in Wyoming. Um, I believe that's where he's from. Anyway, but it's called a Versa groover. Uh, I want to say it was around ninety dollars. And it comes with one blade for that price, and then um, you can get different size blades. Um, this is a medium that I use all the time. I don't even have the other sizes. I just bought a medium, and that's kind of my rule with things. If there's three choices, I get the middle one because it'll work. All right, this is a number six overstitch wheel. So we're going to go ahead and make our, uh, our stitch marks. Okay, I'll take my... Um, a little rubber pad here, and I'm going to go ahead and make my stitching uh, 
stitching holes. Um, I need to do a, a video on hand stitching. Um, there's not a whole lot of them out there. I know there's a guy, um, I can't remember his name right now, but man, he does some amazing videos on hand stitching. But um, I probably need to create just a little short one for those that need some help with hand stitching or just link everybody to his. I don't know. So anyway, I'm just uh, making my holes here for this. And then I'm going to pause the video once that's done. I'm going to saddle stitch this. And then um, when we come back, we will do the next step. One more second here. All right, I'm going to pause the video here, and then we'll, when we come back, that line right there will be sewn. All right, so um, again, I uh, just hand sewed that one line right there, right at the, uh, the bottom of that fold. Okay, so now that folds nice and crisp and, and, and good, it's going to make a heck of a pocket uh, in that wallet. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of glue all the way around the outside edge right here. And I mean a little bitty bit because you don't want that glue to so seep into that Tyvek in any way, shape, or form because then you might have a card pocket glued shut. Okay, so I've taken on my glue jar, I've taken my brush here and I have trimmed it way, way down. That was a little Peter Main trick. Actually, I think he personally trimmed it for me when he was here one day because I wasn't sure how much I should trim. So I can now get in here really, really accurately to spread this glue just right on that last maybe eighth of an inch of line. And it doesn't take a lot of glue at all. I mean, just a tiny little bead of it. And we'll call that good. So we'll do both sides because that's how contact cement works. All right, there it is. Um, our contact cement sets up pretty daggum quickly. So this thing's gonna be ready to put together in just a second. Um, but when we go to construct this, uh, this piece, I'll just go ahead and fold it over and get it glued down, it's, it's ready. Uh, when we go to construct this, this piece is going to be sewn to one of these uh, pocket flaps here. Getting down here, make sure that this line is just as perfectly lined up as it can be. There we go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to glue is this to this. It's just one of the, uh, the card pocket flaps. All right, I'm gonna glue down all three sides of it or sorry, just three of the sides of it. It's going to be uh, all the sides that don't have the sewing on them. All right, and that way, again, this is going to form a, a pocket right here. Um, so I'm going to use the contact cement to do that. And then after that, we're going to hand sew just this one line right here. So I'm going to spread a tiny bit more glue. Again, I'm going to do three sides. Doesn't have to be a lot. All we're doing is holding it until it can get sewn. Spread some of that out and put the bubble of glue there. A 
again, I just get that glue about an eighth of an inch in, maybe a little bit more. Um, it, it's just going to hold it. Now I'm going to put this piece up to that piece for a reference so I know where to put my glue and how high to put it, uh, my contact cement, on the other piece. Let that set for just a second, and then we're going to stick it together. Get this up and out of the way so that we can see. All right, once again, um, normally when I'm putting two pieces like this together, I'll start in a corner, make sure it's nice and lined up. And then I'll run down one side of it, again, ensuring that the sides are very, very even. And then I'll run down the other side of it. Ensuring the same thing. And there it is. Okay, again, I am going to just stitch this one side right here at the top of the card pockets um, because the other sides will be part of sewing the entire wallet together. So I'm just going to do this one side here. I'm going to run my stitch groove. Run my overstitch wheel. And I'm going to poke all my holes and stuff, and I'm going to pause the video so that it doesn't have to be hours long of y'all watching me do the same thing over and over. So, we'll be right back. All right. So, I have now hand sewn this area right here just right at the top of the uh, the card pockets. Um, sewed it to the, that back piece that's uh, going to form an inside pocket on the, uh, the wallet. Right now I'm gonna take my uh, number three edge beveler here and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna burnish that area right there because I won't be able to once the thing is sewn together And I'm going to grab a little bit smaller one over here for the, uh, for the upper part there. All right, there's a number two Montana edger. Just to knock the corner off that right there. And the same on the back side in that area. Hardly anything at all is coming off, but that's okay. It's a thin piece of leather. I'm just trying to round it a tiny bit. And then I'm going to burnish that. I'm going to use uh, Ron's edge rub here and a piece of canvas. Um, I'll just take and lightly spread a little bit of this on there. And take this piece of canvas and give it a good rub. And I love this leather because it burnishes really, really well with the Ron's edge rub. I don't even dye the edges. I kind of like how they look a little bit lighter colored than the rest of the project. Get a finer piece of canvas here. That's a pretty rough piece. There we go. Stick. All right, now that edge is nice and smooth, looking like glass. Um, so now we are ready to do our final construction on this wallet. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I need to go ahead and stitch groove and run my, um, my uh, overstitch wheel all the way around the entirety of this. Cause once you put your pockets in it, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. All right, so I'm gonna run my stitch groover and I'm going to leave a little bit of space to the corners there because we're actually going to cut those corners to where they, uh, they have a little bit of a radius to them. We're not going to leave them um, squared off like that. 
but I usually do that once all the layers are, are together because it's just easier to get them all at once than to try to line them up and do them separately. Now again, I'm gonna go ahead and run my overstitch wheel around this um, because it's just so much easier to do before it's put together while this thing can lay nice and flat than it is after it's all put together. All right, so stitching holes are marked. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue just around the very edges of the inside there. So just like that. And that is how this will be put together. Um, you can line this if you find some good thin lining uh, material. I'm gonna leave this one unlined. Um, it's still gonna be a great looking project. I, uh, I just, Decided not to line it. I don't really have a ton of this leather left because I have another project I need to make out of it. So, just like that is how we'll have the glue done. And, um, yeah. Again, I'm just going to run a very thin bead of glue just around the very edge of this. And then I'll put it up here against this piece for a reference of where to stop with the glue. Janie just left. She has had enough for this evening. All right. So there's one side complete. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the other side here so that I can do the, uh, the card pocket side down on it. I recently made one of these for my mom. She had this old travel bag that uh, her late husband used to carry every time we traveled when I was a kid. And um, it still had some good leather to it, but the bag itself was pretty beat up. So I took the panels of it and cut some big areas of leather out and I made her one of these passport wallets out of the leather from that bag. So a little bit of a sentimental take it everywhere you go type thing going on there. So I was pretty happy to give that to her for Christmas this year. Even though it's not Christmas yet, she already has it because she just went on a trip.
a little much glue there. I need to make sure of which sides I'm gluing here. I do not want to glue the side that I just burnished because that's going to be um, loose. It's going to be a pocket. Okay. Seal up the glue jar there. I'm going to get rid of my paper that has glue all over it so I don't get glue all over my finished project. All right, I'm going to lay this down here and I will start in the corner pressing these two pieces together. Slowly but surely, making sure everything lines up just as perfectly as it can. So there we go. There's the back side that's going to hold the uh, the passport in place. And here's the front side with the, the card pockets and things like that on it. And the extra pockets. And it's going down very nicely. I am extremely happy with how this is going to turn out. Nothing worse than making a video and screwing it up while you're doing it, folks. I'll tell you what. All right, so I am going to uh, sew all the way around the perimeter of this, and then we'll come back when that's complete, and we'll do some, some final edge burnishing and put a passport in it. So I'm going to pause the video while I sew. All right, so I have now sewn around the entire uh, outside perimeter of this uh, wallet, passport wallet. Um, there's the inside right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I, I went ahead and sanded the edges while I was off camera um, using my uh, burnishing, uh, burnishing sander over there. So now I'm gonna take my edge bevelers and I'm gonna just go around the edge and take that nice corner off. I'm gonna be real careful where that gap is in between um, the thicker layers because your edge beveler can get a little bit crazy in that location. This is a Ron's uh, Tools number two edger. Um, if you've never used a Ron's tool, um, I highly recommend them. They are really, really well made, extremely sharp, and um, just absolutely the best edgers I've found. Um, we do have them on our website. I do realize that they're kind of costly, but I tell everybody, try one out. If you don't like it, send it back. I'll refund you, but you will like it, so I'm not worried about it. So now we'll do the inside of this. I almost forgot to turn the radio off when I got back on the camera here. Just listening to a little bit of Willie Whalen. All the rest of the highwaymen. They happen to be the station of the day. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, we have created a corner radius template. And it just has different radiuses of corners on it. Okay, so there's a 20.25 or a quarter inch, half inch three quarter inch and one inch radiuses. Um, I used to pull a quarter out of my pocket and do that, uh, do the, my, uh, my corners when I needed to, but this is gonna be a way better way of doing that. Um, I'm gonna use the, the 0.25. I want a pretty sharp corner, but I don't want it to be an actual angle. I want it to be rounded. And the best way I've found to do a corner like this is I will take my, my uh, my scalpel here and just press straight down right there and then I'm going to take it corner it a little bit more press straight down take it corner it a little bit more trim it off all right and then when that gets burnished that's going to make a very nice rounded corner right there 
Okay, we're going to do the same with this corner here. Push it down. There we go. It's going to make some nice corners. Alright, one more time. And the last time. All right, now we'll use that edge beveler and we'll go around those edges uh, just on those corners there too. Um, technically, I could have done this first, but oh well. I like to do it last. It, it ensures that my corners are good and round. Flip it over and do it again. Corners are the hardest things to edge bevel. Um, it's just really hard to go around them. Now a sharp inside curve, or I mean a, a, a rounded inside curve is really nice with these Ron's edgers to go around. It's not near as much of a problem, but an outside corner, always a pain. All right, so that's done. Now we're gonna go ahead and just burnish up these edges right here. And um, we're gonna call this bad boy done. So, again, I got my Ron's Edge rub here. I'm just going to run a little bit of it on one side at a time. Take my canvas, which is now wet because it was sitting by my soda. Let me get another piece of canvas. All right. Sorry about that. Give it a good little rub there. I think I might use the assistance of the stick. And there we have a nicely burnished edge. So we'll go down this bottom edge here. Finished edges really are a maker or breaker on a, on a professional level project. Um, if you don't work hard to finish your edges and get them nice and smooth and, and looking good, then your, your project's just not going to turn out as nice as it could. Um, I see a lot of folks' projects that, I mean, if they just take the time to do that extra little step, they probably move into a steeper market on, you know, where they could actually sell their goods and the prices they could uh, could command out of their goods, but they don't take that extra little bit of time, or maybe just nobody ever taught them how, um, to, to have that professionally finished edge. And same with stitching, you know, and you've got to, that stitching is going to stick out on a project, especially if you're using a, uh, a thread that contrasts like I like to. Um, you know, if your stitching is not straight and tight and consistent, it's just going to stick out. And if it sticks out to you, it's going to stick out to others. Um, so, yeah, it's all things that we can all work on to improve um, the professional uh, level of our work. Um, basically, Every project you do should be a little bit nicer than the project before it. I mean, you're constantly practicing. You're constantly getting better. Um, you should always strive to make every single project a little bit better than the last one. Take something that you learned from it and carry it over to the next project. So there we are. Um, the Passport Wallet is done. I'm going to put it under a book or something overnight uh, to get it to fold really well. 
but there we have it. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a modeling tool here. This is one of Clay Miller's modeling tools, and I'm just going to run it along the inside of all those stitches just to get them nice and spread out so that you can use the full pocket there, especially on the side that the passport itself will go into because you want it nice and open so that the passport fits in it. Um, this thing was not made for the passport to be loose. Uh, it's not super tight in there, but it's, it's, it's going to hold in. You don't want it to just slide around in there all the time. So. There it goes. And then I don't have my wallet in my pocket, but here's a business card, I guess, that we can put in one of the card pockets. Just like that. So there it is, folks. That is the completed Passport Wallet. Um, as always, I really appreciate you watching the videos. Um, if you are interested in uh, buying the template set that uh, helped make this, uh, it can be found at www.makersleathersupply.com. And um, yeah, I hope you'll have a great night. Thanks for watching.